Okay. Uh, let's take a let's take it to the next level here. Talking about instantaneous speed or instantaneous rate of change, right? I rock instantaneous rate of change instead of average rate of change. And the difference between these two things is average rate of change. You have two points, right? This is what we were talking about. Uh, in this previous video where I was saying the average, this is an average rate of change. This is an average rate of change. This is an average rate of change because there's always a difference here between those two points. Whereas, oops, whereas this is an instantaneous rate of change because we're only finding the slope of that line using one point, which again, counterintuitive to the idea of slope, there's no rise and run to measure between we're trying to use just this one point. And the way that we do that to review is to create smaller and smaller intervals between the two points. And the smaller that interval gets, the more accurate our estimate will be for the instantaneous rate of change. Okay. So uh, if that could ever be zero, a little bit of foresight, if that could ever be zero, uh, we would have the instantaneous rate of change. But I want to show you how to do this example using uh, the TI Inspire, because I know that's something uh, that people like using. I don't particularly like them, but they're more, uh, for some people, they like them. Uh, so finding the average velocity in a time interval that is 0.1 second, that's a relatively small amount of time, right? So the average velocity or the average rate of change is still the distance at, or the uh, position at 5.1 seconds minus the distance at five seconds, and then we take the change in time, right? So this is, again, change in Y over the change in X. How can we find that using uh, TI Inspire? Uh, I'm going to show you this real quick. So um, starting from here, I'm going to transition to this. Uh, we're still going to use a table. Tables, we're going to rely on tables quite a bit here in the early going as we investigate uh, the concept of limits. So I want to make sure you guys are familiar on how to do this. Showed you how to do it in Desmos in the previous example. Okay, here's how we can do this. Now, if we go to new, oh, you can already see a little bit of foresight there. No, I already, I had already demoed this for myself. Uh, we're going to add a graph and we're going to type in or plug in however you, uh, you see it we're going to put in the function again and we're not going to use d and t we're going to use x and y now this is a pretty pretty wild function itself its y intercept is 132 it's a cubic so it's going to have that serpentine shape to it uh, and so you're not going to see much when we click enter here Okay, you're going to see this thing going straight up. It's not a straight line. It's got that serpentine motion to it. But to create a table from this graph, right, you hit Control and T. And what will happen is a table will be created from that, that models that function, just like we did that in Desmos, right? So this method works it, alternatively to what we did in Desmos. It's not doing anything different. Uh, but one thing that I suggest is when you're doing this, I prefer not to look at them on the same screen. I want to investigate the table at some point, and sometimes I want to look at the graph. So I'm going to create two different tabs. So once you create the table, this is, you know, kind of an obscure uh, keystroke, but you hit control six, number six, control six, and it moves the table to a new tab. So now I can toggle back and forth between the graph and I can adjust the graph and alt, uh, and analyze the graph separately from the table. Okay. Now keep in mind what we're trying to do here is we're trying to find D of 5.1 and D of five, right? So the outputs for those coming back to here, we can do that by adjusting our X values, our change in X. So we go to menu. Once you're on the screen with the table, you go to menu table and edit table settings. Okay, menu, table, edit table settings. We want our table to start at five. Okay, we don't want to start at zero because what we're going to do is we're going to change our step to 0 0.1. And if I do that, here is the output at five. Here is the output at 5.1. If you wanted to, you could pull this out a little bit and see those values will float out a little bit more. Okay, so D of five is 414.26. D of 5.1, 4.18.99, uh, all right? 
those values we could plug in here for 14.2 oops whoopsies 414 or 418.99 sorry my fault 418 0.99 minus 414.26 and this is over 0.1 so that's a calculation you're going to have to do separately right i guess we could come back here we could go to the scratch pad real quick if you wanted to and type those numbers in control divided by gives us this uh Approximately 47.3, okay, 47.3, uh, what do we have, feet per second, right? Feet per second. Okay, and we can keep coming back to this table now. If we want to investigate this difference, we come back to the table. Uh, where are documents? Current document, current, there we go. We come back to the table, we go to menu, table, edit table settings and we start at five and we change this to 0 0.01 and now we get the new values. So we're, we're zeroing in, right? We're making this as close as we possibly can. The smaller that interval gets, the more accurate our estimate is for instantaneous rate of change, okay? We don't want numbers that are spread out. That's not an accurate estimate. We want that difference an X, that change in X to be incredibly small. And that's what you're doing in this table. The closer those numbers get, the more accurate your instantaneous rate of change will be.